Is linking arms during the anthem after Wednesday's events at the Capitol. First quarter, Spurs up 11. Patty Mills to DeMar DeRozan for three. Spurs go up by 14. Final seconds of the quarter. Lakers down 11. LeBron James. James was four of seven from three point range. And that shot put the Lakers with an eight. We go to the second quarter. The Lakers are down 13. Jalen Horton Tucker sharing to Montrez Harrell for the alley of dunk. Harrell 10.6 boards. Lakers within 11. Three minutes left in the half. Spurs up eight. DeRozan sharing to Lonnie Walker the fourth at the top of the key. He had 14 points. Under a minute left in the half. Lakers down 10. LeBron James great pass to Kyle Kuzma. Kuzma had only one three-pointer made. He was one of six from three-point range, but he had 13 points in the game. We go to the third quarter. Lakers down six. LeBron James. The great feed to Alex Caruso. Caruso had eight points. LeBron James had 12 assists. Lakers within four. Next Laker possession, same score. Horton Tucker to Anthony Davis. AD, 23 points, 10 rebounds. Lakers within two. We go to the fourth quarter. Spurs up three. DeRozan. No good. Rudy Gay, he gets the rebound. He'll go up and he'll, he'll, he'll hit 15 points for Gay. Spurs up five. Next Spurs possession. Spurs up three. The ball will end up in Gay's hands. The hot hand. Three of five from three-point range. Later with the Spurs up seven. DeRozan. He'll kick it out to Gay. Wide open. DeRozan, by the way, eight assists in this game. Next Spurs possession with the Spurs up seven. DeMar DeRozan driving baseline and then kicking it to jump to jump to Murray. Murray had 18 points. Lakers gave up 16 three-pointers matching a season high. The Spurs win 118 to 109 with six players scoring in double figures. In two Americas. And that was prime example of that yesterday. And um, and if you don't understand that or don't see that after seeing what you saw yesterday, then you um, you really um, need to take a, a step back, not even just one step, maybe four or five or even 10 steps backwards um, and ask yourself, what, what, how, how do you want your, your kids or how do you want, um, you know, your grandkids, how do we want America to be viewed as, how do we want to live, you know, in this, in this beautiful country? Um, because yesterday um, was not it. Yesterday, I think the big picture for me was, how it, it just laid bare uh, the blatant, dangerous, debilitating racism that is our country's sin and has plagued us all these years. Uh, th there can't be a better obvious example of a system that is not fair as far as justice and equal rights are concerned and protection of citizens. It was uh, just right in your face. And anybody that can ignore that uh, is a shameful individual, in my opinion. You know, it's just disappointing. You know? It's disappointing that that's, that's acceptable um, and it's not viewed the same uh, as, you know, people protesting and people fighting just for something like equality. You know, and not being called protesters, being called terrorists and criminals and things like that. And, you know, it's, it's not viewed the same. Uh, I think that's an issue, but it's, it's an even bigger issue that it was just like, it was just accepted. You know, it was acceptable. It was like, you know, they, you got people at Nancy Pelosi's desk, like, come on. Couldn't help but to wonder um, if those were uh, my kind uh, storming the Capitol, what would have been the outcome? And I think we all know um, it's not even it's no if ands or buts. We already know what would have happened to my kind if anyone would have even got close um, to the Capitol, let alone storm in, inside the offices, inside the hallways. When the Black Lives Matter protesting, it was a uh, uh, once the looting starts, the shooting starts. And to my knowledge, if you take something, uh, you're looting. And in that case, for them, they got escorted out the front door and um it just it just it's a slap in the face to to us to the to it's a um it feels like you know we're, we're going backwards you know we thought we were seeing change and you know then this happens hopefully it's a lot of people that's upset about this because it, it's not okay and that is kind of 
what we've been going through, you know, our whole lives of, you know, we fear the cops, but then you had those guys yesterday who was taking selfies with the cops, pointing guns back at the cops. It's just a different feeling growing up in this country. And I feel like we have to work at this to change it. And I feel like the people who don't understand how bad yesterday was just in general, they're, you know, they're a part of the problem for sure. It's, it's unfair to, to, to try to get people to understand, um, but we want people to listen. Uh, there's some things that you can't understand because you don't grow up how we grew up. You don't, you, don't, you don't live in the same environment that we live in. You don't see the fact that when we walk out of our homes or we walk out of our project buildings or we walk out of our apartments, that we're scared to death right off bat because we're afraid of the police. And, and, and that's just how I grew up. When you seen the police, you ran the other way. You didn't feel like it was protection. You never felt like it was protection. Um, so we can't make you understand. We, we don't. Do you understand? We we want you in a sense of. Do you understand what we're saying? Because you will never understand the feeling that we feel being a black man or being a black woman growing up in America. We don't get anything back for what we've given to this country besides a slap in the face. And they're gonna say, okay, well, you know, you should shut up and dribble, which I've heard numerous of times. But I'm never gonna do that. Um, I'm never gonna do that. And they're going to say, you got so many other opportunities, so many guys are in leagues and all that stuff. But, man, that's just, that's peanuts. It's peanuts to what goes on in this country. And um, yesterday was just very shameful. And uh, and I'll just say embarrassing to, to us as the example. I grew up knowing that America was the land of the free and the home of the brave. And we set an example for all these other countries in the world of how to run things and how to be great and how to, you know, maneuver and, and, and change, change the world and things of that nature. And yesterday we look like a, a third, fourth, fifth world country. It was just, it's just very embarrassing. And um, um, I just hope, I hope we can be better. In his career. So I apologize for that, Max and Charlie. I was under the impression he was talking about two of his four championships. Um, I, for some reason, I went deaf. I didn't hear him say the two hardest championships in NBA history. With all due respect to the great LeBron James, I think that's one of the most ignorant statements that have ever come out of his mouth. Uh, let's take into account the San Antonio Spurs in 2014 when they went up against Dallas, when they had to go up against OKC with KD and, and Russell Westbrook, and then they had to go up against Miami uh, for crying out loud. And, and then not only that, they had Dame and those boys in the second round. Let's look at the 2011 Dallas Mavericks that were underdogs in every series. Let's look at the Houston Rockets in 1995 and how they were underdogs, and they were a sixth seed, and they ultimately advanced to the finals and swept. Shaq and Penny and those boys. Let's let's take those things into consideration. But more importantly than anything else, the reason why I use such a strong word like ignorant, um, especially, and I would never, usually never associate such a thing with the brilliance of a LeBron James. Um, sir, what about Bill Russell? You know, one of my boys pointed that out to me yesterday. I didn't see the text until this morning. Uh, but Bill Russell won championships in an era when Medgar Evers and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X were assassinated. Bill Russell was a player coach and won back-to-back -back titles. Bill Russell was a black man playing in Boston and had to endure all the things that he endured in order to win. How can you sit up there and know anything about your history, which I know LeBron knows because he's a savant, and just forget that part? I don't see how you can do that. When you talk about your championships and how difficult now, if you were just talking about on the court, I guess you could say it's debatable, even though I would say I would beg to differ. Uh, but when you talk about just the toughest championships because you want to bring COVID-19 into the equation, Max, or something like that, I, I just don't know how you can ignore uh, the trials and tribulations that uh, Bill Russell had to endure en route to capturing a championship. That's why he's considered the ultimate champion. It's not just because of the 11 he has. It's because of the duress and the circumstances under which he captured them. And they far exceeded the challenges that LeBron James just went through with COVID-19. Well, I mean, look, LeBron is playing, he's doing, he's changing definitions midstream. Number one, okay. I can understand if he says, 
the championship against the Warriors was the toughest. It's a 73-win team. That's the all-time record. They were down 3-1, and obviously they have to play the last game on the road. And it was a tight game, and they held the, the, the Warriors, the greatest half-court offense ever to that point in history, to zero points over the last four minutes and change of that game. Stephen A., you and I saw each other at that finals game. We were there and, saw, and, and witnessed history that night. So I understand him saying that. And I understand him saying that uh, being in the bubble was he felt, or others, players he may have talked to felt, was the most uh, stressful or something like that. But be, it can't be the hardest in the bubble if you win 3-1-3-1, sorry, 4-1-4-1-4-2. You know, they never got extended seven. They only got extended six against the Heat. And I'm sure it was taxing emotionally. But that goes for every single person in the bubble. And if everyone's taxed the same way, then no one has a disadvantage. In that way, it's not the hardest. It can't be. It may feel really tough. I get that. But he's really talking about two different things. As far as you're talking about Bill Russell's uh, uh, performances as a player coach in, in trying times is concerned, I agree with that. Also, you might point to the Knicks in 1969, 1970, who without Willis Reed, remember he limps onto the court, he hits a jump shot, but Walt Frazier had to go crazy in that series in order for the Knicks to win in seven games against the Wilt Chamberlain, Jerry West, Elgin Baylor team, right? Like you could point to, there, there are series throughout history that compare to how difficult it was for LeBron in Golden State. And while no one had ever played in a bubble before this past season, the Lakers weren't the only team to do it. In fact, every other team in the bubble had to experience that. So, so that's my beef with LeBron. He's playing a little fast and loose with definitions 